So this is a very short introduction to VREP. The way we're going to do this is I'm going to show you the screen. So when you open VREP, you end up in something along these lines that looks like this. Your Mac, these things around here might not show up and you might have to do a little fix, which is basically go into your uh, models folder, into your VREP folder, wherever you have it, and issue these two commands. That one, and then this one. Okay, I can give you more details, or, or uh, here it is in a shorter form. All right, so let's assume you, your, screen, your start screen is this one. Now, I'm going to explain some of these things here to you, enough to get you started. So, if you, this, this is the area where you put your object. This is your scene. Here you have the axis, Z, Y, and X, Z in blue, Y in green, X in red. And here are the things that you have in your scene, right? This is basically the, you have the floor, you have uh, lights and cameras and so on and so forth. But you don't have anything else. Now, you're going to have a list of selected objects up here. So let's put something. So I'm going to go to mobile robots. And I'm going to select a very well-known robot. And I'm going to put it right there. Okay. So then you have a little message of, you know, if the robot was made by someone, this is courtesy of whoever made that robot and made it available to be rep. So here we have our R2D2 on the, on the grid, right? Now you can see that this shape is R2D2 here selected, right? It's a multi-shape, which means there's like a lot of objects in here. This is a model. We're going to look with tutorials how how models work. And we can also see their selected position. X is at negative 0 0.1559, Y is at this, and Z is at this, right? And the orientation. So there are a few buttons here. This, when you push this button and keep this one, these two are great, right? This one allows you to move to, to pan the camera. So when you move it on the different axis, right? X, Y, Z. So we can pan the camera and move the robot. Now, this one here allows you to rotate the camera. Okay, so you can view your robot better. This one allows you to zoom in and out of the camera, of the, the camera, right? So you can just uh, scroll the wheel or scroll the wheel of the mouse and you can go back and forth. For this, for example, for rotate and pan, you have to like, click on the mouse and drag your mouse to move, okay? Now, these are the three main elements here. Now let's look at uh, a few things. You can see here that in my scene I added an R2D2, which is basically comprised of many, many other little shapes, right? So there's some, might be some shapes that I can't see. For example, needle one. What is needle one? I, I can't really see it from here. So if I want to close in on the objects that I have selected here, I can always click on this guy and it'll just go and this is needle one, this object right here. So probably it spins or something, right? That's needle one. Now, once I have an object, any object, I can click on this little cube with the four arrows, which is the object's properties. The objects, I'm sorry, the, the transition, translation and position property. So I can move it around, I can translate, I can change its position. It's translation, I can basically move it. And if you understand coordinate systems, am I moving it relative to the world, the whole scene, relative to the parent frame, so relative to, in this case, the needle joint? Or am I, and then you can scale as well, the position. So you can do some, some there. You can do also rotational. Right? You can do the rotation of this object in terms of mouse, in terms of the orientation, and you can rotate simple you know, matrix rotation. So those are these buttons. Now, all objects have a lot of properties. So if I click on the magnifying glass here, right, I can see the shape. This is a specific shape and has a, lot, has a few properties, color, show edges with angle, and this is an angle, and so on and so forth, and you have dynamic properties as well. In this case, if you say the body is respondable, then new things open up. If you say the body is dynamic, 
other things open up like the mass, uh, inertia, friction, and so on and so forth. Those are the shape properties. Now, there's always a tab for common properties. All objects have these properties set in one way or another. We're going to look at these properties in the tutorial. But with this, you get the properties. So, you can also double click on the little shape, the icon next to the object, and that also opens the system object properties. If you want to change the name of an object, you can click on the name of the object, double click on the name, and you have to delete it and create your own name, so name one, right? You could do that. And you can always do whatever um, is that you do. So that's one. Another one is uh, with some objects uh, selected, a group of objects, one object doesn't matter, you can also do some computations, calculations on that object, and you can create formulas and calculations that you can use later. You can also uh, group objects, different objects. You can create collections of objects, and then you can do things to those collection of objects. Okay, And also you can add scripts to some objects. Um, if you want to see more here, you can eliminate this window with a little robot or eliminate the hierarchy for the scene with this one. I like to keep them both open unless they're obstructing my view. And now if I want to see whole RTD2, I can click to fit here and then it fits my screen. So this is the basics of manipulating robots. Now, once I program a robot and I create its components and everything, I can always hit play on the simulation and the robot will run. And then this one has a couple of things here. I can always pause the simulation or stop it to go back to the original mode. So this has been a very quick introduction to uh, VRAP.